Today we're going to be going over this Thermador refrigerator that has stopped cooling. Now I've looked at it a little bit already and it appears that there is some type of issue with the compressor because as far as I can tell everything else is working just fine. The lights come on, the temperature sensor is reading correctly, the condenser fan spins, but the compressor is not powering on. Now the reason I know that is because when the condenser fan is spinning, the compressor should be warm to the touch and there should be a slight vibration which indicates that it's running, but there isn't. So clearly it's not powering on. The question though is why? Now this could be an issue with low refrigerant. It could be an issue with some type of internal short in the compressor, in which case the compressor would need to be replaced. It could also just be a switch that turns the compressor on. The relay could be bad. So we need to go through this troubleshooting process and we need to figure out exactly what is wrong with this refrigerator, narrow that list down. And I really hope that we can because this refrigerator would cost over $10,000 to replace. Now this is really quite ridiculous because as you'll see, the components in this refrigerator are for the most part just off the shelf components. The compressor is a standard Embraco compressor. The refrigerant is R134A. R134A is likely what you have in your car actually. And in many states, you can just walk right into Walmart and you can buy cans of it for less than $10 a can. And if it is a refrigerant issue, that's what we'll have to do in order to fix this. So thank you for joining me today as we go through this troubleshooting process. And I hope that you learned something along the way. And if you do, please remember to like and subscribe. I've taken the shroud off of the top of the refrigerator in order to expose the components that we need to investigate further to try to fix the problem that we're having. The main component is right here. This is the compressor. Now, on your refrigerator, it could be on the bottom, but in almost all cases, it's going to be located right next to the condenser fan, which is spinning right now. If you remember what I said before, when the condenser fan is spinning, this compressor should be running, but I can tell you that it's not. It's not warm, it's not vibrating, it's clearly off. So we have to figure out why that is. I've looked at this in a little more detail now, and I think there's a very good chance that it may actually have something to do with the relay, which is right here. And on top of the relay, we have a run capacitor. We're gonna talk about that in greater detail in a moment. But this relay is responsible for turning this compressor on and off. And I really hope that it actually is the problem because this thing can be replaced fairly easily. Whereas if there's something wrong internally in the compressor or if there's something wrong with the refrigerant, if we would have to recharge the system, that would be much more difficult. So for now, what I want to do is I want to pull up a schematic and we can get that schematic based on the model number of this compressor which is on a sticker right on the side here. And we're gonna look at that schematic in detail and we're gonna get some information from it in order to help us troubleshoot further if this relay actually is the problem. Okay, I've pulled up the technical data for this compressor and there's lots to look at here, but there's really only two pieces of information that I'm interested in. First of all, I wanna know what motor we have. And you can see right here that we have an RSCR motor, which stands for resistance start capacitor run. I'll pull up a diagram of such a motor in just a minute. But in addition to just the motor, I want to know something about the windings in this compressor. In residential fridges, where you have a single phase compressor, you're going to have two windings. You're going to have a start winding and you're going to have a run winding. And I want to know what the resistance across those windings should be so that I can test it with the multimeter and see if this compressor is actually good. So if we scroll down a bit, we can find that information right here. The start winding resistance should be about 5.85 ohms and the run winding should be about 2.75 ohms. So let's talk more about that now. Here's a very basic diagram of how an RSCR motor works. We have our resistor here, resistance start, and our capacitor here, capacitor run. Here's our compressor. Now, if you find that your motor type is slightly different, that's okay, because the basic idea behind how this whole setup works is going to be the same. In particular, so long as you're working with a single phase compressor, which you will be if this is a residential fridge, you're going to have three terminals, common, start, and run. Common is where power comes in. So here's our line, our 120 volts. It's going to pass through a relay, and at some point there's going to be some type of overcurrent protection device. The overcurrent protection is just a switch that's going to open if it detects too much current flowing into the compressor. Once the current gets to the common terminal, it needs to go through either the start winding or through the run winding. Now, as the name implies, the start winding is there mainly just to assist with startup. The way this works is you're going to have some type of device. Here it's a PTC device. PTC stands for positive temperature coefficient. This is a resistor whose resistance is going to increase as the temperature increases. So at startup, this is going to be cool. 
and it's going to have low resistance and it's going to allow significant current to flow between the start winding and the neutral. But within just a few seconds really, this is going to heat up to the point where its resistance becomes so high that it effectively drops out of the circuit, eliminating this path. Our run capacitor here, which connects the start and the run windings, this is here mainly just to help the compressor run more efficiently. That's really all that you need to know, but for those that are interested, here's what's happening electrically. This run capacitor is putting the current through the start winding, out of phase with that through the run winding. The reason that we want to do this is because these single phase motors have poor torque because they don't naturally have a rotating magnetic field like you would get in a three phase motor. In a three phase motor, you have three windings and the current through each of those windings is out of phase by 120 degrees. That naturally gives you a nice rotating magnetic field, which gives you even torque. We don't have that here. So the question that we need to ask is, with our single phase setup, is there anything we can do to, in a simple way, emulate that rotating magnetic field that you would have in a three phase setup? And the answer is yes, we can put this run capacitor in. By putting the current through the start winding out of phase with the run winding, we do actually get some type of rotating magnetic field. It's not nearly as good as what you would have in a three phase motor, but it's better than nothing. And because of that, the motor does run with more torque with this run capacitor in place. Now that we understand roughly how this compressor works, we need to access the common start and run terminals so that we can take measurements across them to figure out whether the compressor is still okay internally. And the way that we do that is we remove this relay that attaches to those three terminals. This relay is held on by a little metal clip which comes off very easily. And then we have the power cord that sends power to the relay. And finally, we just have to wiggle this free. And there we go. That's the relay with the run capacitor attached to it. Now that we have access to these three leads, we can pull out our multimeter and we can figure out whether the compressor is still okay. I have the multimeter set up in resistance mode so that we can take those measurements. But before I do, I just want to mention that this Fluke 117 multimeter that we're using is a fantastic multimeter. I've had it for many years. It's extremely reliable, never had a problem with it. So if you need one, I would recommend getting this one. I'm going to put a link to it in the description. Okay, let's take those measurements. So if we recall, the bottom terminal here, that's going to be our common. It's these top two where we have to figure out which one is start and which one is run. And we're going to do that by checking the resistance between the common and each of those two leads. The values that we're looking for, roughly, are on the start winding, we're looking for about 5.9 ohms. And on the run winding, we're looking for something like 2.8. So let's see what we get. Okay, on the left side here, we're getting a value of about 3.1, which is very close to the 2.9 that we're looking for. Yeah, 3. This must be the run winding. So the right side should be higher, and it is. We're getting a value of about 6.3, which is close to the 5.9 that we want. So it looks like this is the start winding. Okay, so that's very good news because it means that the windings in this compressor are likely good. We should do one more check though, just to verify that. I'm gonna put one terminal, or probe rather, on the body of the compressor. And I'm gonna put one probe onto each of these three leads. And we're gonna make sure that there's no shorts to ground. We want to make sure that there's no connection between any of these three leads and ground. So let's do that. On the left side here, it's reading 0L. That's good. That means it's open. On the bottom, same thing. And on the right side, same thing. Okay. Well, this is very good news. It looks like our compressor is okay. The windings inside are okay, and the resistance values are what they should be. So that means that this thing likely will work. And we're going to try that in the next step. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect power directly to this compressor. I'm going to bypass the relay, just take it out of the circuit. And we're going to see if we can get this thing to start. In order to start the compressor without the relay in place, we're going to have to somehow connect the common terminal on the compressor to the hot of our house's AC power system. We're going to have to connect the run terminal to the neutral. The way that we're going to do this is just using this piece of Romex cable here. This is a standard 14 gauge wire. Your house probably has many circuits that are wired with exactly this type of conductor, lighting circuits, for example. What I've done to it is I've taken about four inches off of the insulation on either end, 
And then on each of the conductors, the white and the black, I've taken about an inch of insulation off. We don't need the ground, so I'm going to just fold that out of the way. One end of this wire is going to go into this extension cord here. Now, if you look carefully at your extension cord, or any outlet in your house for that matter, the right side is going to be a little smaller than the left. That's because the right side is your hot. So on this wire, the black side, the hot wire, is going to go into the right. The white's going to go into the left, just like that. Now on this side, the other side, we're going to use these alligator clips. These alligator clips will allow us to connect each of these conductors directly to the terminals on the compressor. And in doing so, we'll have a connection straight from our house's AC power system to the common and the run windings on the compressor. And that's what we need in order to get it to start. So let's now connect these to our wire. But before I do that, I just want to note that in this step, we are working with AC power, 120 volts, and there is potential for shocking yourself. So if you're not comfortable working with your house's AC power system, then it's probably best not to do this. Instead, you can just go down to your bank and remortgage your house and buy a new refrigerator. It really is that simple. Okay, let's get these alligator clips in place. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to remove the little piece of insulation. We're then going to slip it over the wire. And we're then going to take the hole here in the alligator clip, the hole right on top, and we're going to thread that through the wire. We're then going to just crimp this end down with a pair of pliers so that it's nice and snug on the wire. Just like so. And we'll put the insulation back over it. And then do the same for the other end. There we go. We're back to the top of the fridge now, and we're ready to make our connections. Remembering back from a few minutes ago, our run terminal, which is going to be our white wire, is on the left. And our common, which is our black, the hot wire, that's on the bottom. Now, before we make these connections, it's important to note that nothing right now is energized. The fridge is off, and the extension cord that we made is not plugged in, and that's how we want it. So with that being the case, let's make the connections. We're behind the refrigerator right now and we're just about ready to plug in our extension cord to power our compressor. But before we do that, I want to mention one thing, and that is that we need to have the fridge on. In other words, we need to have the power cord for the fridge supplying power to it. And the reason for that is we want to see if this refrigerator will actually cool once we start the compressor. But it's not going to cool if the condenser fan isn't running. The condenser fan is powered through this power cord, so we need that refrigerator to be turned on. And one other thing to note before we actually do plug this in is that your house has two phases in it. In other words, it has two hots. You really should plug the compressor into the same phase, the same outlet, as the refrigerator is being powered by. In general, I don't think it's going to make a difference, but it could potentially cause a problem, and there's no reason not to use the same outlet, so just use the same outlet. So now that we've discussed that, let's plug it in. Now, you probably can't hear this, but I can hear a slight humming, which tells me that there is power flowing through that run winding of the compressor. It hasn't started yet, though, and that's because there's one small step remaining that is required to start that compressor. So let's go take care of that now. Real quick, right before we start the compressor, I just want to get a baseline temperature reading off of the refrigerator. So it's on, and we should be able to get a reading right off of the inside of it. Yeah, there it is. It's at 70 degrees. So let's see if we can start that compressor and if it'll actually cool this fridge. Okay, now is the moment of truth. Our compressor has power through the run winding, the condenser fan is spinning, and the fridge is otherwise on. We just have to start the compressor now to see if it'll actually run. And the way that we're going to do that 
is we're going to take a little piece of wire. This is just some of that 14 gauge wire that I was using earlier. And we're going to short the start and the run windings, just very briefly. You don't want to connect them for more than a second because you could overheat the start winding. Now, some of you may remember from the schematics that there should be a run capacitor between them. Don't worry about that. That'll make it run more efficiently, but it's not necessary. So, let's see if it works. There we go. It's been about 45 minutes since we got the compressor going, and from the sound of things, it seems like the fridge is running just fine. I do want to wait a little bit longer though before I open the doors and actually check to see whether or not it's cooling. Now, while I've been waiting, I took a look at this relay that we pulled off of the body of the compressor, and I noticed a problem, so I figured that we should talk about it. Now, this relay is interesting because the overcurrent protection for the compressor is built into it. That's what this white piece is right here. This white piece connects to the common terminal, and remember that's where power goes into the windings. And so long as this thing isn't overheated, as long as it hasn't experienced overcurrent, which it hasn't, this thing is at room temperature right now, so long as that's the case, that common should be connected to this top terminal on the back here. This is the L terminal. So in other words, this terminal should be able to accept power and pass it through to this common terminal where it goes into the compressor and powers it. But it's not allowing that. There is no continuity between those two terminals. And I'm going to show you that right now with the multimeter. So we're going to put one probe into the common terminal there. We're going to take the other one and we're going to attach it to the L terminal on the other side. And you can clearly see on the multimeter that there is no continuity. It's reading 0L. It should be reading something close to 0 ohms. So what this suggests is that the overcurrent protection on this relay has failed, and it's failed in such a way that it's permanently opened the circuit. So no power can pass through this relay into the compressor. Now, that makes sense because the compressor wasn't turning on at all. So we're going to wait a little bit longer, and we're going to see if that compressor is actually cooling the fridge. And if it is, then it's very, very likely that this relay, this little $10 part, if that, is responsible for our $10,000 plus fridge not working. All right, it's been about an hour and a half now, and unfortunately, the refrigerator is actually not cooling. The compressor's been running, it's been humming away, it sounds like it's doing just fine. But when I open up the fridge, and when I look at that temperature reading, it's showing 70 degrees, which is exactly where it was before. So it's late now, it's past dark. We're going to have to come back to this at a future date, hopefully tomorrow, and try to figure out exactly what's going on with this fridge.